you were a pilot in the 1930s flying to the busiest airport in the world, what would it be like? Let's take a look. To begin, aeronautical charts were a lot easier to read. There are no airspace markings, but the new four course radio ranges are shown on the map. The aeronautical map we're looking at is from December of 1930 and it would have cost the pilot 40 cents. Statute miles were used. Nautical miles that are used today would not become the standard until 1954. Examples of a city or town's population based on the size of the city's outline were also shown. Visible landmarks such as U.S. highways, state highways, single and double railroads, and even trolley lines were shown. Aeronautical chart creation was a duty of the Department of Commerce. Airport markings are also quite different than what we see today. There are also flashing light beacons that were part of the lighted airway system. The reverse side of the map showed detailed information about particular airports. Looking at one airport in particular, Chicago Municipal Airport. The approximate location and prominent landmarks around the airport were given in text below the drawing. The length of the runways and approximate orientation were drawn on the airport sketch. This airport did have a lighted windsock. Predominant winds were given on this diagram here, which shows the percentage of time the wind was out of that direction. So 20% of the time the wind was out of the southwest. And the higher the percentage, the longer the line. The number of barbs did not equate directly to wind speed. On the 20% line, there are four barbs. And four barbs on the Beaufort scale would equate to a wind of 13 to 18 miles per hour. If a pilot wanted more information than what was on the back of the aeronautical chart, they could go to the airway bulletin. This airway bulletin is from 1927. You can see where Chicago Municipal Airport is. Looking to the northeast, proposed Lakefront Airport would later become Chicago MIGS, which at this time was a landfill and would not be officially opened until December of 1948. Much of the information given is similar to what would be seen in a chart supplement that we have today. And things you don't see today are the brightness of the beacon and how fast it spins, and also rates for hangars which for a small airplane would be $2 per day or $50 per month, and there's also no landing fees. In 1929, Chicago Municipal would be the world's busiest airport. It would also have its first air traffic controller that same year, who would wave a flag, telling the pilot they are cleared for takeoff or landing. Chicago Municipal Airport would also have a name change in 1949 to Midway Airport, the namesake coming from the Battle of Midway. And here's the airport today in relation to what it was in the early days. As always, thank you for watching.